Large open worlds can be absolutely amazing. Just imagine being able to explore some large diverse land and be able to feel as though you're actually there using VR. But one of the huge challenges of trying to do this is actually building your level to a point where it's actually playable on most modern day hardware. This is where level streaming comes in. Level streaming allows for us to load up just a small chunk of a level rather than loading up the entire thing all simultaneously. If done right, this can still make your world feel very large and expansive and as though you've never actually left one chunk and entered another. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do level streaming and exactly how it works. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and check out how this level streaming works. So I accidentally triggered uh, this level to stream. The way that this works is there's actually an overlap box. I must be standing like right on the edge of it. And once, once I pass through that overlap, it'll actually trigger this level to load in and it'll trigger whatever level, if there's a level over here, um, the other one that we have to unload. Um, so let me go and show you real quick how this looks real quick. Um, so as you can see, you can already see we have a red cube over here. So if I come over here a little bit, you can see um, I just passed through another overlap. Our red cube is now gone and our green cylinder disappeared. Um, and it happens during the teleport. So it just kind of looks, it, it, it kind of looks like it's still spawning in um, just a little bit differently, I guess. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know. To me, it kind of looks like I'm teleporting into a different section, I guess. Uh, is the best way I can put it. Um, it. It's kind of a weird way. I feel like it. It, it, it kind of looks like some mixture of, be, of it just being spawned in. But anyways, these these are meant to signify the different levels being streamed in. Now, obviously, these are very simple shapes here. This the level streaming feature is meant more for uh, larger sections of a level. So, for example, you could have you know you come over here and maybe you're in. Um, you, you've got some large city city going on over here. You got like NPCs all wandering around um, and, and there's just like buses and cars. They're just all driving around. You know, you just got some large city and then you come over here and once when, once you're over here, then the city has gone and over here you have like some deep dwarven mines or something like that. Um, and you got like dwarves hard at work. They're, they're all mining away at their mountain or whatever you have you. Um, and then again, you come back here and now the mountains are gone. Now you're back at your city. Anyways, <laughs> um, that could kind of give you a pretty general idea of how something like this could function. Now, um, th like I said, this is a pretty simple uh, setup. Another thing that would be very common is that you actually hide the other level that's being unloaded and the new one that's being loaded. So player doesn't actually see that happen um, because this is mostly meant for optimization or uh, purposes usually to split up a level into chunks. So that way um, only what's necessary is there and not the entire level is all loaded in at one point. Um, so yeah, so this is again, a very simple setup. Um, I'm, I'm going to be showing you how to do all this. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and I can show you exactly how you can uh, set up something like this for yourself. Before we can actually jump into accomplishing any sort of level streaming, we need two things. A persistent level as well as at least one streaming level. Persistent level is pretty simple. This is going to contain anything that always needs to exist regardless of which chunk is currently loaded in. This can include things like the sky sphere or it can include things like the floor's collision or the corridor that you're walking through in order to load in the next chunk. The streaming level is going to contain things that are only specific to the chunk that you are currently loading in. This can include things like the environment, specific enemies, or it can include other sort of interactable objects that you're only going to interfere with while you're in this next chunk of the world. So with that, let's go ahead and set up both of these right now. To get started, first go ahead and make sure that you are in the persistent level that you currently want to use as your main persistent level. Once you have this open, go ahead and open up the levels window, which you can find in the windows tab in the top left. Once you have this window open, go ahead and hit create new, and this will give you a prompt to create a whole new level. I'm going to create a blank level and store it in a new folder called levels in the content browser. I'm also going to do this twice. That way we can have two streaming levels that we are able to load and unload together. 
Once you have your persistent level set up, as well as any streaming levels that you want, now we can go ahead and start adding actors into either our streaming levels or our persistent level. And this is pretty simple to do. To do this, all you need to do is simply double click on whatever level that you want to currently add actors to. And once it is highlighted, you'll be able to modify that specific level. If you want to double check and make sure, you can also go ahead and hit the eye icon in order to see if the actors vanish or not. In addition to this, if we go ahead and hit simulate, we can actually see that our streaming levels don't actually show up by default. By default, these don't automatically load in and we need to load them in ourselves. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. For this example, I wanna make sure that our streaming levels either load or unload whenever our player overlaps with an invisible collision. So let's go ahead and get started on that. To do this, we first need to open up our VR pawn. Our VR pawn by default isn't going to cause any overlap events. So we need to fix that real quick. Now there's a number of ways to go about fixing this overlap issue, but one of the simplest ways that I have found that's just a quick simple fix is just adding a different collider to our player. In this case, I'm simply going to attach a sphere collision to our player's camera just to make sure that this is quick, simple, and that we know that an overlap event will occur. With that, we can go ahead and close our player. And now we need to actually create our actor that's going to do the loading and unloading of our streaming levels. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up our content browser and create a folder called Blueprints. Then in here, I'm going to create a Blueprint class of type actor. Once you've made this actor and you have it open, we first need to make sure that our actor itself has a collision that can detect our player when it overlaps. Once we've given our actor this collision, we then need to get event on component begin overlap for this collision, which you can find all the way at the bottom of the details panel for this collision. Now, in order for this to work correctly, we need to make sure that our player specifically overlaps with our collision. So in order to do this, we need to get the other actor from our collision overlap, and then we need to see if it is equal to the player pawn. Once this is done, we simply pass this into a branch, and then after this branch has passed through as true, we need to first unload the current stream level, for this, I prefer to use by object reference, but if you know your level's name, then you can also do by name as well. Then in the unload, go ahead and promote level to a variable and make sure it's public so that way we're able to modify it in the editor later and we can set this up as many times as we would like. After we've unloaded our current streaming level, we then need to load in a new level. So I'm going to load level by object reference and then I'm going to again promote the level to a variable. And again, I'm going to make sure that this variable is public. Second thing we need to do when we load in a level, we also need to make sure that it is visible after load. This should be set to true so that way our level is actually visible after loading. If you don't do this, then our level will technically still stream in, but it won't actually be visible so our player won't actually see anything happen. And now level streaming is all set up. It's really that simple. With that, you're now able to load in specific chunks of the level rather than everything altogether. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also, I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. With that, I'll see you in the next reality.